is up? My name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. If you are hunting for last minute gifts and you are a little tight on budget, I've got you in this video. Today I'm going to be creating a three DIY, very easy, aesthetically pleasing um, holiday gifts. So guys, these projects are super easy, low budget. If you have a craft store near you, you might even have a lot of this stuff already in your home. So get excited because you are going to DIY your holiday presents for your loved ones. So if you're interested in following along and seeing how I put these together, then just keep watching this video. Okay, you guys, so for this first project, we are going to do um, a beautiful resin DIY coasters. So I have here, you could use plexiglass, but I have just a little glass square that was from an old table. And then I have some silicone caulk. Now, this was a little difficult to kind of get in here. My husband had to help me. Um, you have to like use this pin and puncture it and then start squeezing it. This thing is timed. So if you don't use this right away, it will start drying. So make sure that you pull this out out right when you're ready to do your project do not open it and leave it unopened um, beforehand because it will just get dry and you will have a very difficult time prying it out of here so I'm going to do an irregular pattern and basically I'm using the silicone caulk as a mold um, if you have a mold by all means you can use a mold um, and so I thought that this was really fun to do for the holidays and very easy and straightforward so it's my first time using a caulk gun so <laughs> can't guarantee how this is going to look so I'm just going to So <laughs> there's my irregular um, shape. I'm gonna go over it just to build up the walls a little bit. All right guys, so the next project that we're going to work on is making acrylic coasters. I was also inspired by this amazing video on YouTube. I'm gonna link it down below. And so I set out to get my own little kit of resin. This is the product I've chosen. And I used to use one in the past that was really stinky. This one has no odors. Um, guys, so this one's really great. It comes with two bottles. This is the resin, and then this is the hardener. And guys, this goes a long way. I can probably make about six projects out of these bottles. So here we are, these are already dried. I waited about half an hour when I squeezed these on. And so I've already set up about four ounces of, and it's equal parts, one part hardener, one part resin, and then you mix it for about three full minutes. Now, depending on your size, you're gonna need more, but I've already measured two ounces each um, for each coaster, and I am going to pour this on. Now, you can also add coloring if you'd like. I did purchase like these little, I did purchase like these little resin tints this is metallic gold and silver you can already pre-color these before you put them on or what you can do is maybe lay a layer of clear acrylic wait for it to dry maybe about an hour come back and lay some color on it and then seal it again with another coat of clear acrylic so i'm just letting this i think that this is ready to be poured so you're gonna let this sit for about an hour to two hours to cure. And then once it cures, it should be not sticky to the touch. Then you will rip off your mold and then just pry away the, um, the coaster. And then we're going to, I'm actually going to put some gold ink around the edges and really make it, um, and really bring it to life with that touch. So. And this is what they turned out like. And I also have an emery board. And what I did was the um, edges that are really rough, I just gave them a little, a little sanding down. Um, but we are now to take this up a couple of notches. I purchased some gold leaf. This was $9 at the craft store. And you're also going to need the adhesive for the gold leaf. Now the one that I bought is a little bit unusual. This one's on a wax piece of paper, so technically they're saying that you could, you use less of it. 
Actually, I think it's gonna be harder for me. Um, I just wanna like rip it off and put it on. Go ahead and give this a shake. And we have, for tools, we have a paintbrush and a little sponge brush because you want to dab it on there. So the trick with using gold leafing is you have to put the adhesive on and let it dry. So I'm gonna go all the way around the edges You'll know it's dry when it dries clear. It actually comes on like milk, and then when it's dry, it's completely clear, and it starts to get tacky. So what I'm gonna do is, because this is on a sheet like this, it's a little different, I'm just going to lay it on and then pull back, and then just kind of work it that way. I feel like gold leafing is, you can't go wrong with gold leafing, so even if it like gives me trouble, I can always tear off a sheet and just put it on there. All right, so here is the saran wrap. So I'm just gonna give it maybe three, three pulls here. So right here at this point, I'm not gonna add any color. I'm gonna add the color once we have it onto the mat, um, only because I wanna do kind of like a nice design and I don't want the resin to be full of that color and it will spread. If I put the color in now, it will tint the entire batch and I don't want that. We're gonna let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, again, humidity and the air in your room will make a difference as to how fast it will start to cure. So I'm gonna eyeball it between 15, 20 minutes. It should look like honey. Right now it looks like corn syrup. Um, or like maple syrup in texture. We want it to be really, um, really thick um, so that it starts to be more moldable, okay? So we're gonna hang out for a bit and I'll come back to that. Um, I was basically going to um, freehand the paint on there, but I kind of like wanna do it right. So this is my first attempt at doing this and I don't wanna mess it up in front of the camera. So. I partitioned out two ounces in two new cups and I have two ounces left from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mix a little bit of the gold, metallic gold resin tint in one. And I'm gonna mix that. And I'm also going to take a little bit of the metallic white, which actually looks very pearlescent, so it's super pretty. And I'm gonna put like maybe two drops in there. You have to shake these really well because the pigment lays on the bottom. And I'm gonna give that a mix. I'm gonna give this like about another five minutes. The reason being is because I had the full eight ounces curing for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes just to kind of harden so that we have some form. Um, the full eight ounces was just way too long for it to cure. Um, now that I separated it, it's gonna cure a lot faster. So going forward, just make your sections of different various colors. If you don't want any color, you wanna still free form it, you can also do that too. I just wanted to try it this way to kind of speed things up because the full eight ounces were was taking a lot of time to kind of get to that thick honey consistency. All right. Okay, so um, I think this is the viscosity you need. And I'm going to start, well, I'm actually gonna start with the white first. I just want a little bit of gold. You guys know I'm a minimalist. I don't like a lot of color, and that's just way too much gold for me. So this almost looks like a milky, it looks almost like a milky white, even though it says it's metallic. So let's see here. I'm just gonna go ahead and start in the center and just pour just kind of random. So 
So now we're gonna take a little bit of the gold. I'm gonna, I left some open spots, so I'm going to go ahead and just kinda try to get into those areas there. I'm gonna take a toothpick and I'm just gonna kind of drag paint around a little bit just to create some more fluidity, making it look like blown glass some. Just pulling it and dragging it. You don't have to do this. I'm just being a little extra creative and a little extra, a little extra. <laughs> now I'm going to take the rest of the resin and I'm gonna fill in the center part here. And we're gonna let this cure just for about 15 minutes, maybe 10. Between 10 and 15, I'm gonna gauge it again. This is a timing thing, so it depends on how warm your house is, the humidity factor. So you kind of want to not walk away from this project. You definitely want to pay attention. If you touch this product and it's not, and you feel that it's dry, then it's ready to be put onto your object that you're going to form and mold. Okay, but you don't want it completely hard, like, like a hard plastic. You want it to be soft and moldable. So right now it's really wet, so we're gonna let it get moldable so that we can lift it and put it and transfer it onto the glass here. And we're going to mold it and create a really, really pretty shape and mimic basically um, blown glass. All right, you guys, so here is the resin already poured. So I left some gold on the outer rim and then I filled the rest with the clear acrylic. Okay, so here is my vase and I just went ahead after about an hour and a half, um, laid it sticky side up um, and let it, now this is will have to probably dry overnight. Um, I would suggest overnight because you just don't want to mess with, you want it to cure really well. I also made little folds like this so that the bowl can look Kind of like blown glass when I'm done and yeah so set this down let it dry overnight and we'll come back to it let me show you what the bowl came out looking like look at that guys is that not the coolest thing ever it's I swear I can fool anyone and say that this is blown glass it looks just like blown glass look how pretty this is I love how sculptural it is. And you know, the, I was afraid because I use a saran wrap as my bottom layer and it really left a beautiful texture. Can you guys see that? It's still kind of soft and it will cure like in 72 hours, it'll cure and it'll be rock hard. Um, but I used, I used this bulbous vase when I put it over so that it took the shape and I let it dry like that overnight. So, um, yeah, I added a little bit of gold in there so that you see, it would have been really cool just um, clear, but I think it's really funky, it's really different. Okay guys, I have the last DIY that we're gonna do and I'm such a fan of this DAS modeling clay. This is an air dry clay. It's fairly inexpensive. This is a full, I think this is three pounds. How many pounds is this? Let's see. It's two, 2.2 pounds. It's a lot of clay. So you can do a lot of small projects with this. And basically, um, I am going to, basically I was inspired to do these little ceramic bowls. I've already pre-made one. Um, it looks just like this. So if you love little catch-alls, um, there's so many ways that you can go about making this. Of course, I went super minimalistic and left it. It's still drying. 
So when it's fully dry, it will be completely white. In the beginning, when you are working with the clay, it is a gray color. So I can tell right now that the edges, which are super thin, are already white. I kept my little bowl very um, minimal, and basically this is a really cute little catch-all that you can put on your dresser and throw your rings on there. Um, I just think it's so, so cute. I love ceramic, I love pottery, and without having a kiln um, and extensive you know, machinery, this is just a really fun way to get that ceramic look and super easy to make and gift gives. So. This is gonna be fairly simple, since it's a side. I already have a piece of clay from this morning. And basically, I'm gonna take my rings off. I'm going to roll a circle, make sure that it's not dry. It shouldn't be dry. If you get a new package, it should be fairly moldable. Um, pliable. I'm going to set it down. I also have a protective surface, something that is um, plastic, so that way there's no nothing that sticks onto it. I'm going to just push down once. I mean, some of this, guys, is fairly straightforward. I'm sure you um, already would know how to do this. I'm just going to show you how I did it. I'm using a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can get like a tube, um, a bottle, um, anything that is long. And basically I'm going to take the oval and spread it out to a circle. You want to keep the edges fairly um, the same width. So you want to make sure that you're getting it pretty even all around. You don't want a very thin side and a very thick side. So make sure that you roll your clay fairly evenly. So that looks good to me. So now I have this, um, this was for my little bowl and you don't have to worry about ruining your items because air dry clay will wash right off with warm water. Um, so it like pretty much turns to powder once it's dry. So you're going to take this and just create your shape. I'm going to push down and then I'm going to cut away the clay, the excess clay. Okay. Now I'm left behind with a little circle and I also have, I also have a little bit of water because air dry clay dries up fairly quickly. So you want to be able to work fast, but also keep your fingers fairly damp to kind of smooth out the clay edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it. And what I'm gonna do is put it in the palm of your hand and create kind of like a dip, okay? Kind of like that. You want that little sunken in, not too much, just Cup your hand slightly and just push into the center just so that you have that nice cup. And if you want to rotate and do that, that's actually helpful. Rotate it and create that little dip. Then I'm going to set it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water around my fingers and go around that rough edge. Now I'm going to take my fingertips and I'm going to squeeze a very thin layer all the way around kind of like so. You're just gonna work all the way around, kind of like you're baking a pie. If you've ever baked a pie and you are squeezing the pie shell um, onto your pan, it's kind of the same thing. Okay. And I like to do mine super thin because it starts to look like when it dries, it starts to look like almost porcelain. Um, and I, I kind of like that. So I'm gonna mimic pottery as much as possible. All right, so now we're gonna take the same bowl that we cut our shape out. And this is what it should look like right now. I went all the way around. And what you're going to do, you're going to set this right inside, oops, you gotta make sure that you get it nice and even. 
in there. You don't want to push it all the way down. You want to leave a little bit of room at the bottom of whatever bowl. I also have a bigger bowl, so whatever bowl size that you're using, make sure you don't push it all the way down. Basically what this is doing is creating support for the edges so that it's more of a bowl shape. If you didn't put in a bowl, it would just be flat and then you would have a plate. So depending if you want a plate or if you want a bowl, you can go about it that way. So now that it's in here, this is what it looks like. It's going to dry for about a few hours and you'll know when it's dry, when it turns completely white, it will just pop right out for you if you don't have it sitting on your surface. Um, and once this is dry, guys, it looks just like this and it's completely paintable. Mine is still in the process of drying. I think this is so beautiful. Put it in a really pretty little box with a bow and no one would know that you made this. This looks like maybe you purchased it on Etsy or one of those indie high-end boutique shops. Um, I've seen so many of these even at like Anthropology and just some really beautiful home decor shops that are in my local area. Well guys, I hope that you enjoyed this DIY holiday video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I had so much fun doing this. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Make sure that you comment down below and let me know what your favorite project was. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy holidays and I'll see you in my next video soon.